here speaking with composer uh, Penka Kuneva, who, among many films that she's worked on, uh, films like Midnight Movie, uh, she co-composed the score for Prince of Persia, uh, The Forgotten Sands with Steve Jablonski. Um, she's orchestrator and additional music on many of Hollywood's biggest blockbusters like Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, at World's End and Transformers, uh, Matrix Revolutions. But uh, thank you so much, Penka, for uh, talking with me today. Thank you, Kaya. It's my pleasure and honor. Um, so I guess to start off, uh, how did you get into music and, and what led you to you know want to compose for film and TV and, and games? Um, I began piano lessons as a child and enjoyed improvising and making up small pieces with funny titles like Fish or Bunny on the Field. Then when I was 12, I wrote incidental music for children's theater. Uh, composing at that time gave me a sense of who I was, and I just kept writing short pieces. When I was 17, a song that I wrote won the Grand Prix at the Japanese competition for young composers in uh, high school. And that was a fateful moment when I decided to become a composer for real, and uh, then graduated from the Bulgarian Music Academy, went to Duke on a graduate fellowship uh, to study composing, mm -hmm. but um, I was always drawn to um, music as a collaboration and also music for theater. So when the time came for me to choose uh, a career path for the rest of my life, I chose to become a film composer and was really passionate about that. This was 13 years ago. So it's been part of your life for for, <coughs> for a long time. <laughs> for, yeah, indeed, since since adolescence. So, so when you're scoring a film, uh, you know you're looking, you're sitting down with it. Uh, what inspires you to write the most? Is it the characters, uh, the plot, or the setting? What really speaks to you uh, as a composer and a storyteller? I would say um, the story and the characters in the first place. Mm -hmm. Though I'm equally inspired by the ideas, just the ideas, the concepts of the film, certainly by the plot, the setting, and definitely by the visual style. To me, I'm, I'm a very visual, visually oriented composer, and I always pay attention to um, you know visual style, editing, pacing. Um, the music becomes yet another character in the film. Um, the score is supposed to bring out subtext that is not in the visuals and not in the dialogue in addition to adding an emo emotional dimension to the film and uh, the most important thing for me and what I most enjoy is to have conceptual conversations with the director talking about ideas talking about the motivation of his characters talking about the context mm -hmm. uh, what he wants the audience to get from watching the film so we kind of I, mean, I really enjoy these conversations about ideas and they're most inspiring um, and crucial in the composing process because now writing music is easy but um, to, to get inside the director's head and to understand their vision and to understand you know the film they they have that they have been living with for a couple of years. I think is the most important for any composer to be able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes both ways too, because any technology these days can allow, you know, people to pick up a camera, pick up uh, a program. But I think there is something that can't be taught, some emotional depth to composers, filmmakers that you know it's necessary for that. And the ability to understand another artist's vision, the ability to understand their ideas, what they're trying to say, how they're trying to say it. I think as a collaborator for all these years, the most important thing for me has been to try and understand what is this other person, um, you know, why is this important to him? Mm -hmm. What is his vision? And uh, I think for all composers, being a, and being a collaborative artist, trying to support another person's idea is really important and uh, now you have a new album uh, a warrior's odyssey uh which is coming out uh next month right in october october 2nd right and uh so can you explain what 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 did you want to accomplish with this album and you know what inspired you to do it um to tell you the truth my goal was to grow as a composer truly mm -hmm. to learn new chops to explore new grounds um, for the last 13 years working in Hollywood, I scored films and games, which meant I had to support another artist's vision, uh, write the music that their film needed, listen to temp tracks they wanted me to listen to. So I felt this year very strongly that it was time for me to set my own goals as an artist, work with my own ideas, ultimately to be able to stretch and grow as a composer. So it was purely a kind of artistic growth project 
that's how it began anyway. Mm-hmm. For me to do something that will allow me to grow as a composer outside of always working with another person's vision. And was it a... Uh... How much of your, yourself did you want to put into it? Was it a personal reflection on, on you as a composer and a person? Or did you just want to try, just kind of experience new new genres and new textures? Um, I felt it was very important for me to solidify um, and establish a personal voice as an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, the initial impetus for the city was to compose a few combat action tracks, just, you know, to try something I haven't done, like, you know, sort of for a shooter game. But the whole, the establishing of the personal voice was more important. And I'll tell you why. For the last couple of years, I had amazing opportunities to compose additional music, working alongside the Transformers composer Steve Jablonski. And they were fantastic. I'm forever grateful to Steve. That he plugged me in um, on these very high-profile um, f- games. Um, but... At the same time, I felt very compelled to continue and build upon these opportunities to kind of continue that momentum. I mean, the truth is I composed my best music in the last couple of years on these games, on uh, Transformers, on Prince of Persia, a Korean game called A4 Mm -hmm. that Steve plugged me in. So um, I I felt compelled to continue and build upon the opportunities he gave me um, while at the same time establishing my own voice as a composer. I mean, obviously, I'm building upon his style, and um, I'm really grateful to Steve. I've always acknowledged how important he has been in allowing me to grow as a composer by giving me these opportunities. And uh, and I, I did, rec- I mean, the voice is very strong. I listened to the album. I, I really, really loved it. It was uh, just amazing textures and, and just emotions through it, and it was just melodic, and, and it really was a amazing package. (laughs) Oh, thank you. And uh, so while this is an instrumental album, uh, it wasn't a score for a film, it really feels as if there's a narrative, you know, beneath all of this. Were you writing it? uh, When you were writing it, did you approach it as if you were scoring a film? Or did you want the music to act as individual moments? I would say definitely uh, each track was based on a concept that was very specific. Mm -hmm. And I composed it as a theme for that concept, as if I was writing a theme for a game or film. That was a challenge I set to myself because uh, after so many years of doing additional music, I felt really strongly, well, how about if I now challenge myself to actually write themes that are really um, self-contained and uh, memorable and compelling as, as a thematic material rather than underscore. So yes, I did have images in mind. For instance, um, there was this track called Sniper. So I had I had an image of snipers sliding down ropes from a helicopter. Uh, it's in, in the low bass slides in that um, Sniper piece. Uh, when I wrote the Storming piece, which actually was the first one to write and was most challenging because I was just beginning, I had an image of st- soldiers storming a city at night. Um, and again, I mean, having played games and in having been immersed in the whole game vernacular in the last five years um, and kind of having been immersed in these visuals and images, I mean, I was definitely thinking about, you know, shooter games. And then um, the director of Howling Wolf Records, um, who um, released the city, a Wolf Crumper, Crumpler, he suggested the title of the city, um, A Warrior's Odyssey. It was his idea. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, well, this is a really good idea. Then I'm going to start think about a hero's journey as we know you know the quintessential hero's journey in three acts um you know the hero the hero goes right for some kind of a task and then returns victorious and in the meantime there are all these challenges so the 18 tracks um were, were arranged with the hero's journey in mind and um i figured no we'll start with a battle then the middle section is going to be these faraway lands and that's clearly inspired by Bulgarian um, music, you know, Bulgarian medieval chants and the string quartet playing these uh, chant melodies in a medieval way, um, which is also building upon my work on Prince of Persia, uh, specifically for the ambient level. I mean, I mean, these textures came right out of Prince of Persia ambient level, mm. you know, exploration. So, um, and then after the faraway lands, we return to the battle again. And of course, at the end, there is this, Grand, uh, grand finale, which is triumphant. It's about hope. It's about lifting oneself above the battle. And of course, just before the big triumphant finale, there's like a couple of really kind of down tracks. And they were inspired, you know, the Mission Fail mission fail 1 and Mission Fail 2 were totally inspired by, you know, Gears of War 2, Objective Fail, these great 
um, stingers that Steve Jablonski composed based on his theme that were like the stingers for the failed mission in the video game. All right. So, um, yeah. And uh, so since there wasn't a film to accompany this, did you turn anywhere else for visual inspiration or, where did, or did you just off of ideas? Did you, you know, maybe write some uh, anything to, to get get you to write the music yeah well uh, oh absolutely no the visuals were a big part of it the whole time i i should say i grew up watching um, russian documentaries about world war ii i mean this is i'm talking about early 80s mm-hmm. i was growing up in bulgaria and uh you know basically there's this big brainwashing of, about heroes and war so the truth is um these war movies were a very big part of my uh ch- my adolescence and um I had very visceral memories of, you know, heroes and soldiers coming home and being embraced by their parents. And But these were memories I could rely on. And when I first began composing for the video games like Transformers, for which I had to write a couple of high-octane action um, loops, I mean, I absolutely relied on these memories of war movies. So um, in, in my album, when I was composing the album this year, for instance, again, the string quartet tracks in the middle act, um, like Forgotten Steeples or Between Eden, and um, I always had environments and landscapes in mind from my home country, you know, from places that are meaningful to me and spiritual. So uh, I always had some kind of a environment or place or situation or images as a backdrop when I was writing these pieces. Mm-hmm. For the big grand finale, uh, I had this image of an airplane. Actually, the finale grew out of a demo, collaborative demo. I um, composed with my um, collaborator, Fred Emery Smith. It began as a demo for um, an airplane engine. So I just basically built upon the whole idea of an airplane lifting off from the runway. And that was a very kind of a powerful image that uh, inspired me for the last piece. And uh, and I really do believe that, uh, the, that um, images and music, they work, you know, they coexist to each other. And at least for me as a screenwriter, because I'm not a musician, uh, music inspires images but if you look at the way composers work they look at a film and they have to write music do you which way do you think works better you know music inspiring images or images inspiring music or does it always work both ways i think it always works both ways in a beautiful way i mean in in film scoring we are conditioned to work with images and story because Mm -hmm. they come first that's for sure the sonic ideas develop much later after the film has um a story line of its own. Um, it's really wonderful when a filmmaker knows what tone, what sound they want, and then the composer builds upon that vision and breathes life into their film. But, you know, think about music videos. You know, you have the song first, and the song has lyrics, and then the whole kind of storyline and images are built around. I mean, I, I used to watch a lot of music videos. No, I mean, not so recently, but I think music videos, you have the exact opposite process. The music comes first and then the images. Mm -hmm. So it can work both ways in a really powerful, wonderful way, and both ways are enriching and and fantastic. And uh, to wrap up, I guess uh, I always like to ask composers, uh, if you had the opportunity to score any film ever made, uh, with no disrespect to the original composer, which film would you choose? Oh, it has to be a fantasy or sci-fi. <laughs> I mean, I I adore sci-fi. I adore the type of storytelling where big humanistic ideas are wrapped in fantasy or sci-fi stories. Just think my favorite movie growing up was Brazil by Terry Gilliam. So, mm-hmm. And it was Michael Kamen's fantastic sweeping score that truly inspired me and became one of the reasons why I chose to become a film composer. It was totally an earth-shaking experience in my early 20s. But I would say, you know... Either sci-fi action like Equilibrium, which I re- remember really just enjoying and being riveted by it, or family epic like Sunshine. Um, I would say probably kind of epic, big film, either sci-fi or family drama or human interest drama. And I look forward to to um, scoring opportunities in the future. But <laughs> I would say, you know, maybe Matrix, on yeah, which I had yeah. to work <laughs> And I mean, you've worked in so many genres, uh, TV and film and games. Uh, what, what do you think is the, the most challenging to conquer musically? Um, I think the games have been challenging recently because there is a lot of rigor um, in how the game music is structured. But I would say being able to write a strong theme, being able to tell a story and create an environment, create a world, is a skill that applies for you know film scoring, television scoring, game scoring, because that's what we ultimately have to do, create an environment, create an experience that is emotional and uh, deep 
and riveting for for the for the fans. So that's the goal. We always. I mean, I, I right now I enjoy games. I'm really passionate about games. I mean, I took the time to really immerse myself deeply. Mm-hmm. But uh, I definitely will continue to um, seek scoring film scoring opportunities as well. Well, Panka, thank you so much uh, for talking with me today. It was a, a real pleasure. It's always a pleasure when we get to meet and talk in person as well. And uh, I really love uh, a Warrior's Odyssey. It's a beautiful album and uh everyone listening should definitely check it out when it when it comes out kaya thank you so much it's my honor and i'm really happy that we i got to talk to you and and thank you again for the, for the honor and we'll definitely get to do this again sometime soon <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you all right thank you panka